Well, today we just have uh, two quiz kittens. They're kind of tough. I want you to give them a, your honest best try here. Stop the video. I'll come back with an answer and then a solution for you if you need it. <clears> the <throat> first question says, powdered aluminum reacts with ammonium nitrate to make steam, nitrogen gas, and aluminum oxide. And your first task is to write the balanced equation for the reaction. Well, powdered aluminum would be Al solid. Reacts with ammonium nitrate. Ammonium is NH4 1 plus. Nitrate is NO3 1 minus. Doesn't give us a phase, but this is an ionic compound in their solids. To make steam, so there's our arrow, and steam is water vapor, H2O gas. Nitrogen gas, N2, and aluminum oxide. And aluminum oxide would be an ionic compound, so that would be solid. Now, balancing. I'm going to have a bit of a problem balancing oxygen, I think. Aluminum's not balanced right now. I can put a 2 here and take care of that. I have two nitrogens and ammonium nitrate and an N2, so that's okay. Um, hydrogen. I have four H's on the left. If I put a 2 here, that would give me four H's on the right. I've got three O's on the left and two plus three, which is five O's on the right, and that's a problem. Let me start over. Let me start out by putting a 2 in front of NH4NO3 and see if that helps. Now I have 4 N's, so I'll put a 2 in front of N2. I've got 8 H's, so I'll put a 4 in front of H2O. And let me see what that does to oxygen. 2 times 3 is 6. I now have 4 O's and 3 O's, which is 7. Well, that didn't work either. Let me try a 3. So I'm going to get rid of these coefficients, put a 3 there, 3 NH4 NO3, well that gives me 6 N's, so I'll put a 3 in front of N2. It gives me 12 H's, 3 times 4, so I'll put a 6 in front of water to balance my hydrogen. That gives me now 9 O's, 6 waters gives me 6 O's plus the 3 from the aluminum oxide gives me the 9 that I need. The only thing that's not balanced now is aluminum. If I put a 2 in front of it, I've got it. So there's my equation. 2 aluminum plus 3 ammonium nitrate solid makes 6 water, 3 nitrogen, and 1 Al2O3. Now that we have the balanced chemical equation, if 10 kilograms of ammonium nitrate are mixed with 10 kilograms of aluminum, how much heat is released? Stop the video and try this one. I'll give you a couple of hints. First of all, the amount of heat that's released is per a certain number of moles of reactant or product. The balanced chemical thermal equation will give you that. Another problem is you're going to have to figure out which one's the limiting reactant. Hopefully you remember how to do that. Let's do the thermal chemistry first. Well, I know that the heat of reaction is going to be equal to the sum of the heats of formation of products minus the sum of the heats of formation of my reactants here. My products are water, nitrogen, and aluminum oxide. So let's sum those up. Heat of reaction is, now I'm summing up the heats of formation of products. In front of water in the balanced chemical equation up there, I've got six, so that means six moles of water. And if I look up water's heat of formation, I find out that it's minus 241.8 kilojoules per mole. So that covers water. My next product is nitrogen gas, but that's an element in its standard state, so I don't have to put that in here. And then I have aluminum oxide, and there's no coefficient there. That implies one mole times aluminum oxide's heat of formation, which is negative 1669 0.8 kilojoules per mole. So that covers my products. Now I have to subtract the heats of formation of reactants. I have two reactants. One of them is aluminum, which of course is an element in its standard state. But the other one isn't. It's ammonium nitrate. And there's a 3 in front of ammonium nitrate, so 3 moles times the heat of formation of ammonium nitrate, which is given to me in the problem as minus 
0.6 kilojoules per mole. So that takes care of reactants. Now if I add all this stuff up, I'll have my heat of reaction. Moles drop out in all three cases here, and the units I'll have when I'm done will be kilojoules. I'm going to round this to the nearest tenth because I only know my heat to formation that closely, and it's minus 2,023.8 kilojoules. So that means every time two moles of aluminum are consumed or three moles of ammonium nitrate are consumed, I release that much energy. Notice that it's negative. That means it's an exothermic reaction and heat is released. Well, the next thing I have to do is figure out what limits how far this reaction goes, and that means determining my limiting reactant. So I'm going to start out with 10 kilograms of ammonium nitrate. You wouldn't have to start there. You could start with aluminum, but that's just what I chose. And I want to use this to determine how many kilograms of aluminum am I going to need. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is convert my kilograms to grams. So there's a 1,000 grams per kilogram, and that should take care of that. Uh, next, I want to convert grams to moles. The molar mass of ammonium nitrate is 80.043 grams per mole. So that takes care of that. And now my mole ratio is 3 moles of ammonium nitrate for every 2 moles of aluminum. So now I've converted to moles of aluminum. The molar mass of aluminum is 26.982 grams per mole. So now I know how many grams of aluminum are needed and now I'll convert to kilograms by dividing by a thousand, thousand grams per one kilogram. Uh, I can cancel the thousands out here and do my arithmetic. And this ends up being 2.247 kilograms of aluminum. That's how much aluminum I need. I actually have 10 kilograms, so I will not run out of aluminum. That means my ammonium nitrate is my limiting reactant. Now that I know that, I can answer the question. 10 kilograms of ammonium nitrate are going to be reacted here. I'm going to convert that to moles, just like I did in the previous calculation by converting to grams and then using the molar mass of 80.043 grams per mole. Now my mole ratio involves energy actually. Every time three moles of ammonium nitrate are consumed, 2,023.8 kilojoules of energy will be released. But look at what's canceled now. Kilograms are gone, ammonium nitrate's gone, moles are gone, grams are gone, and the only thing I have left is units of energy, kilojoules, which answers this question. It looks like 84,280 kilojoules would be released. That's a huge amount of energy and that's why this is a popular chemical combination for bombs. Now in this question we're given some information about a six pack of beer. It says it's cooled using ice. <clears throat> so the ice is going to melt. That's an endothermic process and that'll absorb energy from the six pack and then it'll go down and temperature. Each aluminum can weighs 38.5 grams and has 12.0 ounces of beer in it, and the specific heat of aluminum is given to us, 0.902 joules per gram per degree C, and the specific heat of beer is given to us as well, 4.10 joules per gram per degree C. Stop the video and try and figure this out. Use common sense to think about what's going on here and what quantities are you going to need to answer this question right here. <clears throat> How much heat is absorbed? to lower the temperature from 25 degrees C to 5 degrees C, given the information that you had from the previous slide. Well, I want to know how much heat is absorbed by the ice here. So Q is what I'm looking for. And Q is going to be heat capacity times change in temperature. So I need to find the heat capacity for a six-pack of beer. The heat capacity for a six-pack will be comprised of two different quantities. It's going to be equal to the heat capacity of the beer, for one thing, plus the heat capacity of the cans that make up the beer. Because both the beer and the aluminum can absorb it or release energy. So first I'm going to work on heat capacity of beer. 
heat capacity is specific heat times mass. So the heat capacity of my beer is going to be the specific heat of beer times the mass of beer. And I know the mass of beer. It's just not in units that I like. 12.0 ounces of beer are in every can. So I'm going to do this on a per can basis here. There are 16 ounces in a pound. So that gives me in the pounds. And I know there are 2.20 pounds per kilogram. So that gets me into kilograms. And 1,000 grams is one kilogram. So now I can calculate how many grams are in a can. And that works out to 341 grams. So that's the mass of beer. The specific heat of beer was given to me as 4.10 joules per gram per degree C. So when I multiply that by 341 grams, I'll get my heat capacity in units of joules per degree C. <clears throat> I need three significant figures. It's 1400. The only way I can write that is 1.40 times 10 to the third. So that's the heat capacity of beer. You can put that in there. 1.40 times 10 to the third joules per degree C. Now let's work on the heat capacity of the can. The heat capacity of a can is going to be equal to the specific heat of what the can's made of, which is aluminum, times the mass of one can. So the specific heat of aluminum was 0 0.902 joules per gram per degree C. And they told us that each can weighed 38.5 grams. So with grams dropping out here, I'm going to end up again with joules per degree C. To three significant figures, it's 34.7 joules per degree C. So I'm going to add the heat capacity of the can to the heat capacity of the beer to get the heat capacity of one can full of beer. When I add these together and uh, round to the nearest tens place, which is what I have to do here, I end up with 1,430 joules per degree C. Now, that's for one can full of beer, but a six-pack has six of those, so I'm going to multiply this by six to get my total. And that ends up being 8,610 joules per degree C. All right, so now back to my original <clears throat> calculation here. That heat capacity, 8610 joules per degree C, multiplied by the temperature change, it said it was going to go from 25 degrees C down to 5 degrees C. That's a 20.0 degrees C change. I'll see degrees C cancel out, and that'll leave me with how many joules are absorbed by the ice. I get three significant figures, and it's 172,000 joules. So that answers this question. Now I have this question. It says, how much ice must be melted to absorb this amount of heat? if melting ice takes 6.00 kilojoules for every mole. Well, going back to my calculations here and then continuing on, I'm going to start out with the quantity of heat that's released, 172,000 joules. And what I want here is I'm going to calculate actually mass. I'm going to figure out how many grams of ice are melted. My quantity of energy for melting ice was given in kilojoules, so I'm going to convert by dividing by 1,000. 1,000 joules per 1 kilojoule will give me kilojoules. And then it tells me that there are 6.00 kilojoules absorbed for every mole of ice that melts. So with kilojoules canceled, I now have moles of ice. And ice is water. Water is 18.015 grams per mole. So now I know how many grams of ice. To three significant figures, this comes out to 516 grams of ice.